Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today's video is another network tutorial using Packet Tracer that is focusing on trunk ports. This is a second video on my network simulation tutorial and if you're new to this video, you can check out the first video that I made showing you how to install Packet Tracer and how to configure access ports in a network simulation environment. So in this video, we are just doing trunk ports and you should be expected to know how to configure access ports already. And before we get started with the tutorial today, I'm going to show you first what the home lab is going to look like after we finish doing it. So this is the example of the lab that we are going to do today. Okay, so in this lab, I'm going to show you how we actually do it in the work place in real world scenario so i have separated the switches in in here to different floors so this box represents one floor for like every building for example and we have one switch for every floor in the building and we have different devices of course like computers that are connected to both of the switch and the switches on every floor will be connected together using a trunk port okay so in this home lab we have three vlans we have vlan 10 in here we have vlan 20 and vlan 30 so that represents different departments for this scenario so in this example we are trunking the switches together and we are only allowing vlans 10 and 20 to go through the traffic to every switch so i'm going to show you how to configure the trunk ports so that they can connect and talk to each other and also going to show you how to only allow specific vlans in your company for example okay so let's recreate the home lab that i just showed you so i was just a little fancy when it comes to designing this lab so we can use different shapes in here just to be more visual when you're doing your home labs for example so there are different icons in here that represents like drawing shapes just like rectangle ellipse so for example we are doing the boxes i'm just gonna click on this and you can select the fill color i don't want it to be filled right now so i'm just gonna like draw rectangles here for the first and second floor of course this is not necessary you can do however you want to do to your labs okay next we are going to add the switches of course it's on the bottom left most part we are going to do the 2960 switches here we only need two for this home lab and we are gonna add the end devices we are just gonna add some a couple of pcs in here i think i put like two for vlan 10 and one for vlan 20 and another for vlan 30. so i'm just gonna put like four end devices on each floor for this scenario okay and of course we are going to connect them together so for switch and pc we are going to use a straight through cable in here and just like the first lab we're just going to connect it in order of the ports that we have in here so let's just connect all of this Okay, so we have connected all of the cables for the switch and the PC. Now we have to connect the switch with the other switch. So we use the straight through cable in here for the end devices. So if you are connecting similar devices together, like a switch to a switch, a hub to a hub, a PC to a PC, you should use a crossover cables. So that is what we're going to use to connect the switch into the other switch. So I'm just going to use the available port. The next available port for this to connect it and just wait for it to turn green okay so we have laid out our layout for our home lab now okay so next we're gonna move on to the vlan assignment for this lab so what i did in the example earlier i used this elliptical shape in here so for this one i just use a fill color for this and just selected just different colors for different vlans so i'm just gonna select yellow for 
the first VLAN in here just to make it easier to differentiate which PCs will be on the same VLAN like later on it's really a good visual to have to have like different colors and shapes like this this is what I usually do when I am making home labs like this And of course, we have to assign different subnet for each VLAN and we can also do the labeling here at this time. So we are going to type in our subnet in here and the VLAN number so it won't be confusing when we are configuring it later on. So let us type in VLAN 10 for this one and VLAN 10 subnet will be 192.168.1.0. For example, so they're gonna have different subnets now because they are different. We should do that to the other VLANs too. This is really helpful. I always just label all of the subnets and the IP address. So when I am testing something, it'll be just easier to see which IP address I have to ping or what VLAN should I use and assign. So all right so we are just gonna assign like ip address on the end devices for now so this is pretty easy and just follow me along in here um, i'm gonna speed it up we are just gonna use the ip address in order we are gonna start from dot one until like whatever is the next available one so just make sure to Put some labels so it'll be easier later on. So 168.1.1. We are now gonna do the next step, which is to assign a static IP for every devices because we now know what IP address they they are gonna get. So the next step would be to configure our switch. So we are going to configure access ports for this because we have end devices connected to each switch. So that's what we're going to do first before the trunk ports. So just assign them also in the specific VLAN, respective VLAN that they are under. So these are VLAN 10, 20, and 30s. So let's get started on configuring access ports. We are also going to create the VLANs because we are doing this from scratch. Okay, so now that we are done configuring the VLANs for each switch and all of the end devices, we have assigned them to the specific and respective VLAN, we can now do some testing so we can see what we've done in the home lab. Okay, so we can test our VLANs now and see if all of those in VLAN 10 can communicate with each other. Let's ping it. So let's ping the other computer in here which is 192.168.1.4 and as you can see it's it is reachable because they are on the same vlan now let's try to ping from another vlan which is the dot two dot two so we can ping 192.168.2.2 and as you can see it's gonna time out because it's on a different vlan so this shows you that our configuration is working and we did it properly because we have assigned the correct VLAN to the switches. Okay, so we have just tested everything on this first floor, but we haven't tested pinging from one floor to another floor. So let's try that out first. So we are just gonna ping from a PC in here, from VLAN 10 for example. So ping 
another PC on the same VLAN like this 192.168.1.2 in here. 192.168.1.2 and it should time out because we haven't configured the switch communicating to the other switch on the floor so it is all fine on this floor or on this level because they are connected directly to the switch but if you want to reach the other computer on the same vlan but on a different switch you have to configure a trunk port for that so to configure trunk ports of course first you should know the interface where the switch both of the switch are connected so for the switch it's the interface 05 and same with the other switch so let's configure this first switch first okay so type in and fa05 and remember when we were configuring access ports it is the similar command switch port mode so before we configure it to trunk port let us use like the help or question mark in here so there are three options we have access dynamic and trunk so it's same with how we configure access ports if we want to configure it with act with the trunk port you just use the command switch port mode trunk and then it should be all set for trunking and in the packet tracer it usually defaults to the dot one queue which is one of the protocols for vlan tagging we have two dot one queue and isl that is cisco proprietary so in most cases you can you have to use the command switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q to explicitly use the dot one q but the packet tracer just uses that right away or by default if you set it up uh, as a trunk port so to verify that we are using the dot one q in here we can also do s some verification command so one verification command that we can use to check all of the trunk ports in our switch is show interface trunk and you will see all of the trunk ports that are configured in this switch we only have one trunk port which is the 05 so you would see what encapsulation method it's using or the vlan tagging method so it's using the dot one q now you can also check in here which specific vlans are allowed right now we didn't allow anything explicitly so it's allowing all of the vlans okay so now let's do the same for the next switch so they would match both of them should be configured with trunk ports so type the interface number fa05 in this case and switch port mode trunk so if you verify it do show interface trunk then you would see in the switch that it's showing all of the trunk ports that were configured okay so we should test it out now if we can reach the other pc on the same vlan on the other floor that is connected to a different switch so earlier we weren't able to ping another device that was connected on a different switch but on the same vlan but now let's try if that works so from this second pc or second switch i'm just gonna ping one of this in here on the first switch so 192.168.1.3 and as you can see now you can reach it earlier when we didn't have the trunk port configured it's not pinging so now it's working and let's just check that we still can't reach another vlan uh vlan 20 for example so ping 192.168.2.1 and it should time out so that's how we know that our configuration is working if you can test it all right so i'm gonna do another test 
and see if uh, VLAN 30 can reach the other VLAN 30 PC in here. Because uh, what we want to do in our lab is to only allow VLAN 10, which is this yellow circle in here, and VLAN 20 in here, and not allow the IT VLAN to go through both the switches in here. So let's just check if they can reach each other. Let's ping the other PC, 192.168.3.2. And as you can see, it's reachable. And that's not what we want in our home lab example so what are we going to do to configure it and how do we only allow specific vlans okay so just click on the switch and then go to the interface of your trunk port it's and fa05 in this case and just type in switch port trunk allowed vlan and the vlan number that you want to allow so we want 10 just put a, a comma to separate the different vlans and 20 for this example and it should just allow vlans 10 and 20 so let's do the same for the other switch so if we verify our trunk port we can use the do show do show int trunk and as you can see in here in in the trunk port that we have is showing only the vlans that are allowed in the trunk earlier it was the default vlan every vlan allowed or every possible number of vlans you could have is allowed but now we are just limiting it to two vlans okay so now let's test it so earlier we were able to reach vlan 30 from the other network so let's try it now let's ping the dot three dot two and this should be timing out because it's not allowed to go through the other switch so there's also another trunk verification command that you can use if you just want to see one trunk port so you can do a show interface and the interface number and switch port switch port oops typo switch port and you can see the configuration for the trunk for just one port and it is usually more detailed than the previous verification command that we use so you can see if the port is enabled in here what kind of mode the port is using in here and other details that you might want to see okay so that is how you configure trunk ports in your home lab using packet tracer so i didn't discuss isl in here which uses native vlans i didn't discuss native vlans yet because that's like a different topic but if you want to do really basic trunk port configuration you can do this home lab so i hope you were able to follow through with our home lab example and you're able to configure your own home lab with packet tracer if you do have any questions please leave it down in the comment section below and watch out for the next video about port security so the first videos is gonna be for layer two configuration and then we can move on to layer three with router configuration next time so i hope you guys learned something from this video and i hope to see you guys in my next videos thank you so much for watching